Hello YouTube and fellow DC Comic fans, I'm Keith OneShot, and this is my dramatic reading series, and today, we will be covering The Flash Annual, Flash War Prelude Part 2, from DC Comics. We start this story where we left off, with Frances Kane, aka Magenta, who just regained all of her memories of her life as a hero, and her time spent as a rogue. Upon learning this, Magenta went into a rage, and is now attacking Wally West with her powers of magnetism. Wally West, aka The Flash, does his best to save a nearby woman. Then he shouts, What are you doing, Frankie? Magenta chases Flash and shouts, Not Frankie! Magenta! That's my name, right? That's what you made me into! This monster! The Flash saves the kid. Then he tells Magenta, You're not a monster. You're a hero. And a hero wouldn't hurt anyone. Then Magenta says, What? A hero like you? Someone who pushes people until they break? You never cared when you put little shy Frankie in danger. Did you? Did you? Then Flash gets knocked over. Then Flash says, What are you talking about? Then Magenta replies, I told you my powers were a curse, but you wouldn't listen. You pushed me, and I became a villain. I hurt people. We then hear Flash think to himself, Maybe I should have put more thought into this. Magenta then wraps Flash up in a chair with metal. Then she says, But in this life, that was all gone. Erased. I was happy. I was just Francis Kane. Magenta didn't exist. She was locked away, safe from hurting people, including myself. But here you are again, pushing, dragging me back into misery. Then Flash says, What is this place? Then Magenta tells him, Have you really forgotten everything? Even the house we shared? That is so like you, Wally. Racing in and out of people's lives. Then Flash says, Magenta, someone made changes to the timeline. Altered things. My memory. Pieces are missing and... Then Magenta says, And you felt like you wanted to share your pain. Did you ever consider that I didn't want to remember you? Then Flash says, I did. Then Magenta replies, What? Then Flash looks down and says, It's all I've been thinking about. It's why I came to see you in the first place, wondering whether there was even a point to me coming back at all. We then hear Flash think to himself, It's what I couldn't say to Barry about Iris, what he can never understand. When he came back, everyone was so happy the Flash was back. Me? The world didn't even skip a beat. The woman who raised me, who introduced me to the Flash, doesn't know I exist. Maybe Magenta's right. Linda. Iris. Maybe they're not remembering. Happier in a life without me in it. Then Flash tells Magenta, I don't have a real life anymore. A life outside of this costume. And every time I slow down to think about it, all I can think about is how disconnected I feel from the people around me. But it wasn't fair for me to put that on you. I screwed up your life because I was scared. I'm sorry, Frankie. Then Flash breaks out of the chair and says, And I'm sorry about this too. Then, as Flash runs around her, Magenta shouts, I'll kill you! Then Flash says, I know you're still the Francis Kane who gave me my first mix CD. Then Magenta screams, You took her away! Because of you, I can never go back! Then suddenly, the Flash grabs Magenta and runs away. Then he tells her, It's not about going back, Magenta. It's about moving forward. And we're going to get there together. We then see that Flash brought him back to where they first met his kids. Then Magenta says, This is where I grew up. Where we grew up. I haven't been home in years. That smell of snow and the pine trees in the air. It was my favorite part of winter. I had forgotten it. Then Magenta powers down and walks up and hugs the Flash. Later on, we see Wally West having a coffee with Frankie. Then she tells him, Argus said I can go back to school without trouble, Wally. They have a team of trained therapists to help with my special issues. Then Wally says, I really screwed up, Frankie. It was dumb and selfish of me to just spring all those memories on you. Then Frankie says, Oh, it totally was. For sure. I could tell some of it faded when I calmed down. You restored a lot of bad memories, Wally. But I also got a lot of good memories back. Like how you're a horrible dancer. Then Wally says, I... Frankie, knowing the truth can be a burden. Are you sure you're okay? Then Frankie tells him, I would rather know. I mean, come on. If you knew a big part of your life was missing, 
Wouldn't you go a little nuts? Then Wally says, Right. Then Frankie says, But everything you said about feeling disconnected, it reminded me of when we were together. You were so afraid of failing the Flash's legacy back then. The Wally I remember didn't just step out of that shadow. He shined so bright there was no shadow. Then Wally says, Thank you, Frankie. Then Frankie replies, So, you staying in Keystone? Then Wally says, Well, the problem with not having a life outside of the Flash is that I kind of sort of don't have any money. But you know what? I can ask an old friend for a favor. Later on, we see Wally standing in an empty penthouse apartment. Then we hear Nightwing say on the phone, You signed the papers? Then Wally replies, It's all mine, Dick. I owe nothing to fill it with, but I owe you a lot. Then Nightwing says, Don't thank me, buddy. Thank Bruce for leaving his Wayne Industries Platinum card lying around in the Batcave. No one from Gotham should lecture anyone with moving on with their lives. But you know the Titans and I worry about you, man. We're family. Then Wally says, I know. Then they end the phone call. Then, as Wally looks out the window, he thinks to himself, I was mad at Barry before because he was right. I was standing still. I needed to rebuild. But moving on doesn't mean I can't look back at where I've been and celebrate it. We then see a memory of Wally as a kid, where his mom says, Wally, we, your father and I, think it would be good if you lived with your Aunt Iris in Central City this summer. Would you like that? Then Wally thinks to himself, It might not be the summer, but I think I need to pay Central City a visit. Wally then sees a lightning storm in the sky. Then he says, What the? Then he takes off running. As Wally runs towards the storm, he thinks to himself, Barry was right. It's time. Time to run through the roadblocks in my life. Rebuild my memories. Good or bad. I know Iris will help with that. But no matter what happens, no matter the changes in any timeline, I will always be the Flash. And it's time I finally got the answers I've been missing. We then go to the 25th century, where the commander says to a man in a red mask and robes, I know you sent us here to investigate the Flash Museum's destruction. But the temporal energies we've uncovered here have spread, infecting the actual history, changing parts of the museum right before our eyes. And there are traces of other forces here that are... Then the man in red says, None of your concern, Commander. Need I remind you what happened to the last person who attempted illegal research into time shifts? I've been informed that Eobard Thorne was murdered here, and you're distracted. Do I need to give this assignment to another agent of the temporal courts. Then the commander says, No, sir. Thorne deserves justice. During the cleanup of the crime scene, we found the murder weapon. It's a black hole gun, which we tested for fingerprints. And we have a suspect, Iris West. She was a famous reporter from the 21st century. We haven't been able to undercover why or how she was in the 25th century, but she was also the matriarch of the Flash family. Then the man in red says, I'm well aware of Iris West's profile. The men and women who have called themselves the Flash survived many tragedies because they had her in their lives. But her position in the Flash family doesn't give her permission to kill, even someone like Eobard Thorne. I don't like mysteries, Commander. The man in red then points his hammer at the Commander and his men. Then he tells them, Retrieve Iris West from the 21st century for questioning. You should expect some resistance. Then the CSI says, Don't worry, your honor. Then they all hit a button on their chest and transform into Mirror Monarch, Commander Cold, Heatstroke, Weather Warlock, and the Golden Guardian. Then Commander Cold says, The Renegades are on the case. Then, as the Renegades go through the time portal, the man in red says, This is exactly the kind of mission we created you for. And of course, to mock the rogues. Then the man in red walks into an area of the Flash Museum called Enemies of the Flash. As he walks through the halls, he says, After all these years, the tragedy I suffered, the depths I let it drag me down to, I can finally prove that only by surviving it does it make one stronger. I recreated myself again to help the Flash, and in turn, the future. I will do anything to make the one true Flash into the hero we need. All it took was being trapped in the 25th century to figure out what that world would entail. Then the man in red takes off his hood and reveals himself to be Hunter Zolomon, 
aka Zoom. Then he says, Zoom will make the Flashes go to war. And that ends today's story. Comic published by DC Comics. All rights, text, characters, and storylines belong to DC Comics and their respective owners. Not me. This is Ben. The Flash Annual. Flash War Prelude Part 2. And I'm your host, Keith OneShot. If you like this video, make sure to check out the rest of my Comic Complete Dramatic Reading Series. And support DC Comics by picking up a copy of the Trades and Single Issue Comics. Support your local comic book shop. Take care and have a great day. Goodbye!